Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to see how we can do benchmarking with the YOLO V9 model. We're both going to do benchmarking on CPU and also a GPU with just a single line or a command with Autolytics framework. You can go in and test all the different optimization frameworks, which we export our model into once we want to do inference and deploy our models. So just a single command and we get all the benchmarks on our own data set with our own custom models. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If we go inside our modes tab up here at the top, we know that we can both do training, validation, prediction, export, track, but you can also do benchmarking and it's basically just going to export the models into all the wearable inference optimization frameworks as we're familiar with. So right now, let's just go inside that tab. We pretty much have videos for all the documentation tabs in here now, and also how you can do benchmarking on YOLO V8. So in this video, we're going to do it on the YOLO V9 model. So here you can read about why benchmarking is crucial because it is actually like pretty cool to say that you just have your model, you want to know what optimization framework should I use if I want to run with the fastest inference speed or the number of frames per second. So here we can take a look at the key metrics in our benchmark mode, and that is our mean error position, top five accuracies for our image classification, and also our inference time. So we want to increase our inference speed as much as possible and still keep a high mean error position. We don't really want to have our models export into a specific format and then we lose accuracy, even though we might get a few XPS more, could be 2x, 3x, and so on. We don't really want to lose accuracy, but could be some cases where that is acceptable and you just want the fastest model as possible. So definitely look at these key metrics. Here we can see the supported export format. You can also export it inside this mode tab over here to the left. So the most common ones are ONNX. It is basically for optimal CPU performance, but you can also use your next models on the GPU, Tensor RT and all of that. So it's kind of like the standard export format that most of these optimization frameworks are using. Then you can also use Tensor RT for maximal GPU efficiency if you have an NVIDIA GPU. So that is an optimization framework running on NVIDIA's GPUs. Then we also have OpenWindO, which is optimized for Intel hardware. Either if you have an Intel GPU, CPU, and so on, you can actually get significant speed ups. Even just by using the CPU, by using OpenWindO, you can get two to three X inference speed without really losing any accuracy. We also have Core ML, TensorFlow Save Model, and all these other different export formats that you can export into depending on what type of hardware you're using, are using mobile phones, S devices, and so on. Here you can read the tips, export ONNX and OpenVINO for up to 3x CPU speed and Tensor RT you can get up to 5x GPU speed. So this is act like significantly increase in speed ups and in inference speed. So it's basically just a number of frames per second. So let's say that the hardware that we're running it now, we get 20 frames per second. We optimize it to Tensor RT, we run it on an NVIDIA GPU, even though we still run it on the same GPU with 20 FPS, just by optimizing it to the Tensor RT framework, we can actually like squeeze out 100 frames per second without really losing much accuracy, if any. Here you can see the usage examples. It's just a single line, either in a Python script or in the command line. So I'm just going to run this in a second. I'm going to run this on my MacBook CPU to test that out, but also on my 4090 RTX graphic card from NVIDIA. So this is the only line that we need to run. Again, we can just copy paste it directly. We can set all the different arguments that we want to set depending on the image size, if we want to use half precision, the device that we're using. In this example here, we're using CUDA and we're not using half precision. We could choose that again it will go in and basically use that so it just enables floating point 16 instead of floating point 32 as default you can also go in and activate int 8 so basically using integer 8 bits quantization so it's going to take your model from floating point 32 and quantize it down to int 8. So when you do quantization, you can also get a huge speed up by doing that, but you also lose a bit of accuracy and also basically just performance in your model. So these are the arguments that you can set. Here you can read about the different export formats and it will basically automatically detect all the different frameworks available on your computer, depending on what you have installed, but also what type of hardware it's running on. And it will do all of that automatically. You just need to install the frameworks run the benchmark command here and we're good to go. You can also read about the FAQ here, but it's pretty much all that I covered here in the video already and what we're going to take a look at in just a second. So right now let's just open up a terminal and let's run this command. 
So right now I'm just going to activate my Conda environment. There we go. And now we can just go in and run this command line. So let's just scroll up a bit. We have the user example. Right now I don't have a GPU available. I'm on my MacBook, but I already ran this and we can take a look at the GPU results in just a second as well. So right now we're going to benchmark the YOL V8 nano model. And here we have the data. So you can also benchmark it on a specific data set. Could be a custom data set that you have on your own or the ones available directly from the Ultralytics data set registry. So we just specify the YAML file and then we specify the model. This is a pre-trained model, but you can also specify your own custom model. So you benchmark your custom model on your custom data set to figure out what are the optimization frameworks should you use in your application and for a specific hardware that you're running this on. So yeah, let's just grab this command. Let's go inside the terminal, just run it. And then it's just going to take a couple of seconds here. It's going to download the model, going to set up all the different benchmarks, pull all the relevant information. It's going to do all of it automatically. And then at the end, we're just going to see the results. So right now we can see it does something with OpenVINO. We can see here that Tensor RT is not supported on CPU, which, which is because it is only for NVIDIA GPU. So it's going to just go in, detect all of that automatically. And then at the end, we will get a summary. So I forgot to set it to the YOLOV9 model. So here we can specify YOLOV9 and let's go for the small model instead of the YOLOV8. We already have a video covering that and the results. So right now it's just downloading the YOLOV9 small model, going to process all of it that we just ran through. While it's doing that here on the left side, let's just pull up an image that I have from my Windows computer where I have my 4090 RGX graphic card and I just ran the exact same command but with the other arguments in here where we specified the device as zero for CUDA. So again, here we can see the results. So this is the summary that we're going to get at the end and it's the exact same thing that we'll get on the left side. So on the right side, we have the GPU. On the left side, we have the CPU in just a second. So we get the summary here, we can see the mean average position, we can see the precision recall for our bounding boxes. So we can go in, compare that against pretty much just what results we're getting with the PyTorch model. So here we can see that we get around 0.7 on the pre-trained model. So again, this is the YOLO V9 small model. And then we can see if just for the PyTorch version, the default one that we normally use with Autolytics and YOLO when we just run it out of the box. We can see it here, 0.7 and frames per second, it is around 13 frames per second. I think that is a bit low compared to what we normally get when I'm running this on a 4090 graphics card. If you just scroll a bit further down, we can then see Tensor RT. So I have downloaded Tensor RT on my Windows computer. And we can see we get a significant upgrade here in the number of frames per second. It is basically like a 5x asset set inside the documentation as well. If we export into TensorFlow Safe model, we're not really getting better performance by using the GPU. NCNN here, paddle paddle, we're not really getting the same performance compared to Tensor RT. So if you have an NVIDIA GPU, definitely export into Tensor RT, use the whole NVIDIA suite and frameworks. So here we can see that the power of it is just significantly better. If we take a look at the mean error positions, it is pretty much in line. All of them are very similar. We don't really get a drop in our accuracy. Now our results on the left side for the CPU is done. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. The mean out positions is pretty much the exact same as the GPU version, which also makes sense. And again, this is only on the Coco 8 data set. So if you take a look at the FPS, so we have the mean out positions, they're the same. You can also see the size in megabytes of the files used. So right now for the CPU version on my MacBook M2, we have PyTorch, TorchScript, ONNX. We also have OpenVINO. Core ML because we are on Mac and Apple hardware now, Paddle Paddle and CNN here. So for PyTorch, when it's just running on CPU, we only get three and a half frames per second. So that's very low. Just by converting it to ONNX. And again, to convert these models, you just need to run a single line of code or a single command. And you have pretty much exported, you can load it into that framework and run your inference in your own custom applications and projects. So yeah, let's go down and take a look at it. Here we pretty much get like a four, three and a half to four X increase in speed ups as the documentation says as well. Here for OpenVINO, we can see it pretty much decreases a bit. We get two X and here we can see some pretty awesome results with Core ML, but this is also an optimized framework running on Apple hardware. So if this is actually like running on CPU, this is very, very crazy that we get almost 80 frames per second running on a CPU. Optimized Core ML is optimized for Apple hardware. 
but this is comparable with performance to a most GPUs out there if you're just running it with the PyTorch model or even Tensor RT. So this is pretty cool. Definitely go in, check it out, do the benchmarking on your own custom models, custom data sets. It is just a single line of code. You can do it with your V8, your V9, your V10, all your own custom models. Check it out, go inside the documentation, read about it and also the FAQ. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy benchmarking.